Howdy. Had a question from a guy out in the northeastern United States asking about growing pineapples in the northeast. Well, uh, it's actually for tropical fruit growing, which seems to be becoming a very popular thing. There is a, there's a fad going on about interest in the tropical fruits, I think. And if I was to choose one single tropical fruit that I would say, yes, that's the one, if you lived in an apartment in New York City or some such place that would work for you, it is the pineapple. The pineapple is perfectly suited to this job because it's in a family of plants uh, referred to as bromeliads that, that are mostly epiphytes that live on trees. Okay, now the pineapple is one of the terrestrial bromeliads, but because of its relationship with that family, the root system on a pineapple is not very important to the plant. I mean, it anchors the plant, it holds everything up, it does pull water and nutrients and so on, but as far as needing a lot of root room, uh, pineapples don't need it. They prefer there isn't a lot, actually. And the nature of the soil that they're growing on, as long as there's enough moisture and nutrients, doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it needs to drain. Uh, you can't be, they don't grow in a swamp. But they're very, very tolerant to soil conditions. Anything from lava to andesol to sandy loams, you name it, the pineapples will grow on it. Um, the plant isn't that big, which is great, because so much of this tropical fruit, you know, like lily koi, these are passion fruits, these are vines, huge. Even the dragon fruit, which isn't too bad, is still a pretty good sized thing, you know, and it's got spikes on it anyway. Uh, the pineapple is about the smallest stature of any of the tropical fruits I can think of. It's also great because it only takes one or two years to get a pineapple to fruit, depending on the variety. And then the mother plant, like all bromeliads, dies. So the original plant after fruiting is goner. You pull it out. But it produces offsets that then continue the process. So you don't even have to keep the darn thing alive for more than a couple of years to get it to fruit. If you're trying to grow a dwarf lemon tree or something in your apartment, uh, you know, you're going to have to keep it around for years and years and years. And the longer you have it around, the more problems you're going to encounter. That's just the way it is. Uh, so I'm hot, actually, on pineapples as being the tropical crop for everybody who doesn't live in the tropics, if you if you want to do this. They're tasty, um, they're high in nutrition, blah, blah. They're also really easy to grow. Uh, you don't even need to know how to start a seed to grow a pineapple. For most of you who uh, don't live in a tropical area like we do here, um, the pineapple tops are what you will start with. This is typical way that you would grow a pineapple. Um, here in Hawaii, we will use the top for propagating, but we tend to prefer to use ratoon or basil suckers, which are um, look like tops, but they're below the pineapple, and then again, the basil ones are at the bottom of the plant near the root. They pop up. The reason we like those is because those suckers are actually faster to produce fruit. Um, the top is actually the slowest piece, but you know, if you're living in Minneapolis and you want to grow a pineapple, you're going to use a top, and we use them here too. Just I wait a little longer to get my fruit if I do that. So, first off, you want to find pineapples in the market that are good quality, delicious. You want to work with a delicious and wonderful pineapple. If you cut into the thing and you, know, you don't want to grow it, you know, because if it doesn't taste right. So, you look for pineapples that are good. If you're lucky enough to be able to get your hands on the white sugar loaf type or kapoho whites like we grow here, um, then hey, thumbs up, you know. Um, they're the best. I love them. They're just great. But there's so many different kinds of pineapples. I have 36 different types in the collection here. They do vary in quality. They vary in size. They vary in how long it takes them to produce pineapples. I've got some Florida land race stuff here that's coming on in 12 months from the planting. That's the fastest one that I have here. Um, they vary in the size of the plants and stuff too, but you start off with a 
good tasty pineapple in good condition and especially if you're going to grow it you want one that's got a nice healthy top and I know people are always reaching in and pulling the leaves out to see if these things are ripe or not uh, if you're going to grow it try using your nose to sample for ripeness uh, you don't want to be tearing the top apart not that, that's that, not that side of it anyway so once you get your pineapple and you cut the top off I usually will remove any fruit pulp that's around the end of the stem just by popping it off of there so we don't get the mold and the rot. Then you got all these little leaves down at the bottom. These little leaves, the ones that point downward on the pineapple, they tend, they'll tend to keep your pineapple from going into the soil. And so you want to be able to peel these off. Plus, as you peel them, you'll usually find vestal roots on the stem underneath the leaf. And that will get you started quicker. So, first thing first, I'm just going to go ahead around the pineapple like that and start pulling off enough leaves of the bottom of this thing to get a stump that I can push into the soil that will hold. That's the main thing when you're propagating a plant stability. That's it. you got a cutting, you want to make it, and it's wiggly, stake it. You know, do something to hold the plant stationary. In the case of the pineapple, a good sized stump on the bottom of the, uh, the stem right here is going to be good to help it stay down in the soil. So I'm, here I'm pulling off almost every one of the downward facing leaves, okay? And I ended up with this stem right here. It doesn't have much Vestal red on it uh, at this moment, but there are bumps along the side of the stem that I can see. Uh, that are going to become the roots. They're going to come out of these little nodes on the stem bottom. So, okay, here's your pineapple. It's perfectly prepared for planting. Next thing, you need a pot. I suggest for growing these, uh, say, you know, in your greenhouse or your sunny southern window or some such place, that a plain old one gallon nursery pot or six inch houseplant pot. These all work well. It's about the right size to get you going. Uh, you want a good potting medium and so buy a quality potting soil. If you don't know what's what, most of the time you're best off picking the ones that have the OMRI certification on them. O-M-R-I, OMRI, uh, Organic Materials Registration Institute, I think. It, it certifies that what you have there is a, is a natural, uh, more organic type potting soil, most likely you're not going to have a lot of municipal waste and garbage in there. I had a lady contact me the other day tell me that she got a splinter of glass in her eye from her potting soil and come to find out it was basically labeled as containing so much plastic, glass, metal, uh, because it was trash based. A lot of potting soils today are made from municipal waste, the stuff they throw in the green bins. And uh, it's pretty crummy stuff in general. You don't want that. You want to use soils that where the origin materials are quite clearly labeled and would say things like worm castings, kelp, um, maybe poultry manure a little is okay, um, forest compost, which generally these days means it's sawmill waste, which is good. That's clean. It's from virgin trees, you know. Uh, it's not been painted. Uh, other potting soils, we, okay, beware. Um, I, I will, before this is over, I'm going to show you some of the soils and fertilizers that I do use here because people ask me that constantly. I generally stay away from it because I'm not in the business of selling soils or fertilizers, so I don't advertise for these companies. Also, wherever you live, the type of product may vary. And so don't go crazy looking for the stuff you found here at my place on the video because you probably don't even have it in your neighborhood. Well, you might. Okay. Anyway, so I have a quality potting soil in here. In this case, my potting soil was uh, a standard potting mix made by uh, uh, Kellogg Cascade, which is a good soil company, and you can see their name on their bags. That's even available at Lowe's and Home Depot and stuff. And the highest grade of their soils is made by a company called G&B. stands for Gardener and Bloom. Um, 
it's also owned by Kellogg Cascade. Uh, those are the more uh, high-end uh, natural soils. They tend to be very, very good quality. I recommend them. You can't grow a good plant with a lousy soil. Case closed. You buy that cheap bargain basement discount house stuff, and chances are your plants will suffer for it. All right, enough on soils. So what we have here is a one-gallon pot. I just dunked my hand into the pot like so. I have my plant. This is really complicated, right? You take your pineapple, you push it into the pot like this, okay? And then I am packing a little bit of soil tight around the stem here so it's nice and firm. I'm going to finish the process off with water. The water will pull the soil down, tighten everything up, and that will really take all the air spaces out and get this closed up. Now, the next thing this will need is a little bit of fertilizer, but not a lot. There are no roots in here right now, okay? And so they're not going to take up much nutrients out of the pot. The only reason I throw some nutrients in here right now is so I don't forget when they start to spread roots, which will happen in a matter of weeks, okay? And so if you're working inside in an apartment in Minneapolis in a picture window or something on that order, then you're probably going to want to use a mineral salt based time release fertilizer. It's convenient, clean, and it doesn't smell. Okay. But a lot of guys love to do things organically. And uh, so if you use it sparingly, it's possible you could use certain organic fertilizers in here too. Um, there are boxed uh, fruit tree foods that will work on a pineapple. Um, I generally like to use the, the best quality and cheapest price that I can get. And so here at our farm store, we have dried pelletized chicken manure. Real easy to handle, got a good punch to it. It isn't organic. You know, it depends whether you like manure or not. If not, there are vegan fertilizers and all kinds of things out there. But there's the difference in what sort of fertilizer you might use. I happen to have some pelletized chicken right here. So, if you want to know, what is he using? It's a, was a 50-pound bag of Nutri-Rich. Uh, it's a 4-3-2 with 7% calcium. That's a pretty good balance of nutrients. And... Uh, here I have less than a tablespoon, just a little bit here in my palm, uh, of the pellets. And the pellets would then be applied right there to the top of the soil. All right, now if you were using a time-released fertilizer, um, that would look like this stuff here. Little brown or gray pellets. This is Nutricoat 180. Um, it's a time-release fertilizer. It's encapsulated in a soybean resin, and it's actually an inorganic made to act like an organic. And I'll tell you what, one thing, it smells a lot better than the chicken manure does in your apartment. So consider that. It's up to you. Anyway, uh, so if you're going to use this stuff, it's used at the rate of one tablespoon per gallon of container size. All right. So let's try this here one more time. I have another top. I'm going to do two of them. So again, there is the stump on our pineapple. Okay. There we go. Now it's got a little curve in it, and the reason that is because my pineapple fell over. Most of the ones you're going to buy, grown by Dole and such, they make sure they're standing upright. So you probably won't have that curve, but the curve is kind of irrelevant to this anyway, that works one way or another. So again, this is really complicated. We have the pineapple plant on the right hand, the left hand dips into the pot, creates a pocket in the soil, the pineapple is then inserted, placed straight, and the soil is packed around it. Now various different types of pineapples are more or less pointed. Some have saw teeth on the edges, depending on what you have there. And so, you know, be a little careful in handling the tops um, with this type. They have smooth leaf edges and the tips are fairly soft, but it is possible when bending over to take one of these in the eye. I've done it. Okay. And so you want to be careful with that. Keep them out of your face. Okay, so here I have 
a three tablespoon measure that now has one tablespoon full of pelletized time release fertilizer inside of it and I'm just going to take that and dump it right down here around the bottom of the pineapple. Um, it will flush into the soil um, in some places where it tends to be rather dry weather you'll want to embed this fertilizer inside the soil under the plant here we get a lot of rainfall and so I'm going to put these out in the nursery and the rain if the fertilizer is put too deep in the pot will flush below the plant so here I apply my fertilizers on top so now I did say I was going to let you see some of these products that I'm using so this bag is Nutricoat Total. It is a controlled release fertilizer with micronutrients. It is a 131111. So this is pretty close to a balanced fertilizer. Now, I like it because I don't have to worry about does it have enough of this or enough of that. It's got plenty of it. As far as soil is concerned, this is what I'm using. This is ProMix. BX with mycorrhizae. Now sometimes I use Promix HP when I can get it. That means high porosity. And so that works really good for me here because like I say it rains like crazy and so a more porous soil tends to drain better. But the BX is a standard uh, nursery growers mix. This is uh, general purpose as it says right there. And it has that label on the bag. This thing is a 3.8 cubic foot. It's a big square bale, compressed. Um, that stuff's made mostly of milled sphagnum peat and perlite. That's really what's in there. Say we're living in Minneapolis and we're in an apartment downtown, but we're gonna we're gonna grow a pineapple. We know we're gonna do this. Hey, you you've been here to have I. You've eaten the luscious pineapples in the field. Maybe you were. Uh, um, lucky enough to be able to bring one home because by the way you can do that pineapples are allowed so if you're here and you find a white pineapple you can take it on the plane if it has no ants or bugs or problems and bring it home when you get home you can twist the top off and you can stick it in a pot like this and right there in downtown Minneapolis in your picture window you're going to be able to raise yourself a white Hawaiian pineapple it's going to be a Minnesota pineapple but uh, you do need a lot of light. These things love sun and they won't develop good sugars unless they have lots and lots of light. So ideally a greenhouse is the best place for them in a temperate climate. Um, I used to fruit them in unheated greenhouses in the California Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. Now I will say that the quality of the fruit was never as good as the stuff I get here in the fields in Puna. But it would make pineapples and so it was a lot of fun. Um, they don't take any frost so you can't leave them out in the weather. Most of the say the Midwest or so probably uh, late May you know you could probably stick your pineapple out in the backyard and grow it on the patio or some such thing or on the deck um, and it could stay out there to probably about September early September mid-September in most cases uh, your pineapple can sit outside and enjoy the sunlight but if you do that make sure if it's been living inside the house and you suddenly move it outside so they have to be adjusted if you're moving them in and out uh, you're going to put them in part light for a couple of weeks as they go outward gradually moving them in the full sun uh, going the other way we don't need to worry about it when it goes from the from the deck into the house that isn't the problem moving in and out is a pretty good idea you probably get a good uh, uh, a better fruiting uh, and if you're lucky around here say pineapples fruit but these this type fruits between August and October so you may just be able to pull a ripe fruit off the top of the thing say in early September if you did it right when the weather's still mellow and if it managed to set the fruit in spring and and ripen it throughout the summer in full sun you may very well have something that's quite good it's very possible uh, but again like I say the pineapples a small plant it doesn't take a lot of room as this grows larger and larger you will need a somewhat bigger pot uh, now all, I have fruited them in gallon containers before that can be done but 
you won't get as big a pineapple. It's just not as robust. I would go with maybe up to a two or three gallon pot and you don't need a deep one. This doesn't have a deep root system. It's shallow and spreading. So you use a squat container. Okay, Something that's short, wide is good for a pineapple. And that would still usually fit in the average home as house plant. As you're watering pineapples during the cold weather, this is important, the short days, cool weather, it's possible you can rot your plant. You don't want to be saturating the soil at that time of year. They're not going to be growing very much on you, especially if the days are really short and your house is a little cool. It's going to be sitting there. So if you soak the pot, you can start to rot the plant, and that will terminate your project. Um, best way to water a pineapple during the winter months is to pour water into the leaf whorls above and allow that water to trickle a little bit of it down and into the soil to keep the soil just slightly damp. You want most of the water actually stuck up here in the leaves. They'll use it that way. They will also use fertilizer that way, and particularly if it's a liquid. So like fish emulsion, for instance, uh, will work to feed pineapples. Uh, the fertilizer was put in here with the chicken manure. It's probably good for six weeks, probably. Um, this one over here it should be good for about 180 days, uh, but it's probably going to take you up to two years to ripe the pineapple. So you're going to need additional fertilizer along the way in the container to keep them going. If you're using a time release like this, probably uh, two applications a year till the pineapple's ripe is going to do it. Um, with other fertilizers, they're not going to last as long. Uh, usually follow the manufacturer's instructions on the package or the bottle. They don't need a lot. They're not very hungry. This is really a tough plant. It really is, but they do need some if you want good results, so you'll want to feed them. After you harvest your first pineapple, and usually the way you can tell uh, is typically by color and by smell. If it starts smelling like a pineapple, and if it's starting to color up with yellowish, reddish, brownish on the outside, kind of loses the green tone, your pineapple's ready to go. And so uh, harvesting is pretty simple. You grab hold of the pineapple and go crack. It comes right off the top of the stalk. There really isn't a whole, more, a whole lot more I can say on this subject that I can think of. But uh, hopefully that will get you started at trying to grow pineapples in your apartment or in your house in the Midwest or wherever you live that isn't pineapple country. You can do it. It's fun. It's really a neat project. You don't need any special equipment and you don't really even need a lot of horticultural skill for this one. This is a pretty simple crop. Aloha.